uh, good morning to all of you previous class uh, we discussed about the uh, started with the heat exchangers <coughs> there uh, we learned about the meaning of a heat exchanger and classification of heat exchangers heat exchanger you know it is a device in which which is used to transfer heat from hot to, to cold fluid okay classification uh, we come across direct contact heat exchangers like cooling towers indirect contact heat exchangers like uh, like automobile radiators or any other type of radiation in cooling towers it may be a natural convection cooling tower or post convection cooling tower we classified uh, the heat exchangers based on <coughs> uh, uh, nature of contact direct contact indirect contact okay cross flow heat exchangers then uh, parallel flow heat exchangers uh, counter flow heat exchangers both fluids mixed or unmixed then regenerative type of heat exchangers boilers condensers these boilers and condensers and uh, space radiators uh, based on classification based on the phase change okay fluid uh, undergoes uh, uh, phase change in these heat exchangers then we come across the cell and tube heat exchangers compact heat exchangers uh, cell and tube heat exchanger finds a wide, wide industrial uh, applications but it is not suitable for the where there is a space limitation so in that uh, when whenever there is a space space limitation we go for compact heat exchangers uh, we come across your automobile radiator a condenser of a the refrigeration system air conditioning system these are all the example for examples for the com, uh, compact heat exchangers compact heat exchangers and we know uh, uh, simultaneously uh, you know the how the temperature distribu uh, distributed within these heat exchangers like parallel flow heat exchangers counter flow heat exchangers cross flow heat exchangers boilers uh, sorry uh, condensers uh, evaporators that is the boiler now at the same time we started discussing about the uh, overall heat transfer coefficient uh, in the previous class here overall heat transfer coefficient is uh, uh, you are all aware we uh, we have studied in the previous classes uh, that is uh, overall heat transfer coefficient it may be based on either inside surface area or the outside surface area here the one equation what you are observing here it is based on the outside uh, surface area the this equation is available in your heat heat and mass transfer data handbook also the the one which is uh, based on the inside surface area is also available in your data handbook under the heading heat exchangers here u not is given by this equation 1 over d not by di 1 by hi plus d not by di fi plus d not by 2k lan d not by di plus f not plus 1 over h not here d not and di are uh, are the outside and inside diameters of the pipe in meters h not and si outside and inside uh, heat transfer coefficient uh, in terms of watt per meter square degree celsius or degree kelvin and k uh, is the uh, thermal conductivity of the pipe material and f not and f i uh, these are the outside and inside falling factors you know uh, falling is the one of the problem associated with the uh, heat exchangers upon uh, repeated use of heat exchangers the uh, scale uh, deposition takes place on the inside as well as the outside surface of the pipe this uh, scale which is formed on the either inside or outside surface of the pipe it is a bad conductor of heat and it offers resistance to the flow of heat from the hot fluid to the through the pipe material and then from the outer surface of the pipe to the the cold fluid so this we need to consider during the analysis of heat exchangers and it is a bad conductor of heat and for this the water treatment is required in most of the uh, applications we, you need to go for uh, take certain precautions to avoid this the uh, falling resistance so here uh, some of the uh, approximate values of overall heat transfer coefficient based on the experimental observations or experimental calculations uh, the for different uh, <coughs> physical situations the overall heat transfer coefficient is given here for example brick ex brick exterior wall plaster interior uninsulated it is around 2.25 likewise uh, number of gas to gas uh, 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 situation physical situations are given here and one more example double plate glass window suppose if it is a double plate gla glass window so overall heat transfer coefficient lies between around 1100 to 5600 steam condenser you just take an example of a steam condenser because it is a heat exchanger steam condenser is a heat exchanger we are interested in that even feed water is a heat exchanger we are interested in that here these two it is around 1100 to for a 
steam condenser it is uh, sorry double class uh, glass window is 2.3 sorry it is st for steam condenser overall heat transfer coefficient is higher it is uh, <coughs> 1100 to 5600 whereas for feed water it is it is around uh, 1100 to 8500 Similarly, water to water heat exchanger, just you can see here, we are also, we come across many uh, liquid to liquid heat transfer, water to water, many uh, heat exchangers in our day-to-day uh, -day practical situations, it is 850 to uh, 1700. Next, free and 12 condenser with water as a coolant, free and 12 condenser. So this free is the one which is used as a refrigerant in most of the, uh, the refrigerator, free group is used in the uh, refrigerator air conditioning equipments. It is free it is around uh, 280 to 850 overall heat transfer coefficient. So similarly, this table is available in your data handbook also. So you can uh, go for uh, the values of these readily available. Or it is also possible to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the outside surface area or the inside surface area. The equation, these two are available in your data handbook and also one equation in, is available in the previous slide that is based on the outside surface area U0. Next, you know, water to oil heat exchanger here, if you observe this, it is around 110 to 350. Similarly, the number of uh, steam to kerosene or gasoline, it is around 280 to 1140. 1, 1, number of values, the uh, readily available. Next, uh, the just now we have discussed about the, the fouling factor. Okay? It is one of the unwanted situation uh, uh, when we are using the uh, heat exchangers because this once the fouling occurs, it will reduce the heat transfer rate and obviously the uh, time economy and it will also affect the economy also. The uh, fouling factor, uh, it is uh, when the heat exchanger surface is fouled with the uh, accumulation of the deposit, uh, the scale deposition, what you called the it will introduce the additional thermal resistance. And uh, this effect of this fouling is introduced in terms of the fouling factor F. But in the analysis of heat exchangers, uh, if we come across this uh, fouling factor that uh, just now we have seen in the equation U0, the F, Fi and F0, these two are the fouling factors uh, inside as well as the outside surface of the tubes. And you know, it is a, <coughs> This falling is a complicated phenomenon and no reliable techniques are yet available for its prediction. We, uh, okay. Reliable techniques are not available. Uh, now we can classify the falling into different uh, categories. Okay. First one is the scaling and the how the scaling uh, occurs. So there are various categories. We can classify them as scaling and precipitation falling. So this uh, scaling and precipitation falling is the crystallization from solution of dissolved substance onto heat transfer surface. The crystallization from the solution of the dissolved substance onto the heat transfer surface. If the scaling occurs because of that, it is a scaling or precipitation falling. Next is the particulate falling. Uh, particulate falling is one where the accumulation of finely divided solids suspended in the process fluid onto the heat transfer surface. Whenever there is an accumulation of finely divided solids suspended in the process fluid onto the heat transfer surface, it is called the particulate fouling. Next is the chemical reaction fouling. As the name indicates, it is the, uh, the uh, deposit which is formed on the heat transfer surface by chemical reaction. You are all aware about the number of chemical reactions. Next, corrosion fouling. Corrosion fouling is, it is the accumulation of corrosion products on the heat transfer surface. Corrosion, you are already aware, you have learned in your uh, uh, chemistry subject about the corrosion. Next, biological fouling. It is the attachment of the microorganisms to a heat transfer. Sometimes the microbes which are carried along with the, the fluid of a fluids which are exchanging uh, normally cold fluid because uh, hot fluid uh, that uh, higher temperature say around uh, 500 degrees Celsius, 600 degree fluid is there. Microbes cannot, uh, may not sustain that temperature, but the cold fluid which is entering with a, at, at room temperature, that may carry the, this microorganisms. They uh, are attached on the surface of the, the heat exchanger. So that is called the, such type of fouling is called the biological fouling. Next one is the solidification fouling. Solidification fouling is the crystallization of pure liquid or one component from the liquid phase. It may be a crystallization of a pure liquid or one component from the liquid phase on a subcooled heat transfer surface. Now, question arises, what are all the effects of uh, these fouling as well as the 
what is the economic penalty arising out of it now whenever the the falling occurs it will there will be a higher capital expenditure through over sized units because if at all we have to transfer the expected uh, the heat from the hot fluid to the cold fluid so due to formation of the falling we need to go for the over sized units due to formation of the falling that will increase the cost of production maintenance cost everything next energy losses due to thermal inefficiencies once the scale formation occurs what happens it may not uh, the heat is may not be properly transmitted from hot fluid to the cold fluid so energy loss will be there and we need to clean the heat exchanger surfaces periodically so the cost uh, of the cleaning is a economic penalty for the uh, uh, heat exchangers during its operation next once we go for the cleaning of the heat exchangers uh, to remove this uh, pole which is formed on the surface of the heat exchangers we have to shut down the the heat exchanger or a process yes, particular process or a whole process so that will result in the loss of production during the shutdown for cleaning next tubular uh, equipments uh, tubular equipments uh, manufacturers association tema that is t e m a tubular equipments manufacturers association has prepared tables of falling factors as a guide in heat transfer calculations okay they have based on their experimental observations okay it is totally based on their experimental observations okay uh, tubular equipment manufacturers association tema has prepared tables of falling factors as a guide in heat transfer applications so this is the table uh, unit falling resistance for heat transfer equipments so it is here uh, suppose if the fluid uh, is flowing uh, is a water water temperature is around uh, 25 degrees celsius or less when the water velocity is 1 meter and less these are the depending upon the types of waters what are the types of waters if the water is moving with a velocity 1 less than 1 meter per second or equal to 1 meter per second these are the the falling resistances suppose if the water velocity is more than 1 meter per second for the with the same temperature these are the falling resistances falling resistances so sea water you can see the distilled water treated boiler feed water so you see the boiling uh, the resistances falling resistances engine jacket okay the suppose earlier we were using uh, 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 water for cooling the ic engines okay the, it is circulated through the engine jacket so uh, uh, so that is in that it is case it is this much the lakes cooling tower and spray ponds okay we come across thermal power stations cooling tower and the spray ponds to cool the condenser water it may be a treated makeup water untreated so depending upon whether it is treated or untreated makeup water this is the these are the values boiler blow down what is the values Bra brackish water river water it is minimum okay it is a american mississippi river water okay there is a vicar oh, author is from the america uh, nakati ojis it is taken from that book uh, so mississippi river okay they have given the uh, east river and the new york bay okay chicago sanitary even for the uh, indian conditions also if you refer the indian author books they are available in indian river heat and mass transfer data handbook also these are values are available similarly for the different types of fluids now you, in the previous slide we have seen the the falling resistance for the uh, water now for the different types of fluids you, you see industrial oils are there suppose Uh, if it is a cleaning circulating oil machinery and transformer oils trans vegetable oils okay the lubricants uh, quenching oils heat my heat treatment of metals we are using the quenching oils for heat treatment of metal oil this is the overall uh, the falling resistance fuel oil uh, then industrial gases and vapors organic vapors it may be a steam okay alcohol vapors steam exhaust the uh, steam which is coming out of the turbine exhaust after performing the work it is having uh, falling resistance of this refrigerating vapors air for air it is this much industrial liquids it may be organic refrigerating liquid and brine which is used for the cooling brine solution one example brine solution i can you give is the uh, ammonia and water solution it is called the brine which is used in the uh, ammonia refrigerator example i can give now uh, with this brief brief background about the heat exchangers uh, we learned uh, what is heat exchangers classification of heat exchangers types of heat exchangers direct contact heat exchangers indirect contact heat exchangers the overall heat transfer coefficient equations the pooling factors what are all the different categories of pooling uh, uh, 
uh, uh, polling uh, mechanisms then uh, the economic penalty for that then the values based on the, uh, the uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, tubular exchanger tema uh, based on the experience of the tubular exchanger manufacturers association they have given the list of uh, uh, this uh, polling uh, resistances uh, you have seen in the previous two slides now let us with this be brief background upon the heat exchangers on heat exchangers let us move on to the analysis of heat exchangers normally analysis means it is thermal analysis of heat exchangers it is, which is which has been carried out by the two methods one is the logarithmic mean temperature difference method lmtd so this uh, logarithmic mean temperature difference method is used when we know the inlet and exit exit temperatures of hot and cold fluids so inlet temperature of hot fluid exit temperature of hot fluid inlet temperature of cold fluid exit temperature of cold fluid if you know for example th1 th2 or simply t1 and t2 tc1 and tc2 if you know all the terminal temperatures i can say four terminals temperatures okay so then we can uh, go for logarithmic uh, mean temperature difference method suppose if you know the only the inlet conditions some manufacturer some uh, that customer will come to you suppose if you assume that you are working in a heat exchanger manufacturing industry a particular uh, for one fine day customer will come and he he will mention his inlet conditions my hot fluid inlet condition is this much temperature is this much uh, cold fluid inlet temperature is this much i need a heat exchanger for this you design me a heat exchanger you will give all the relevant data then knowing only inlet conditions we cannot go for the logarithmic mean temperature difference then we have to go for the effectiveness method or it is also known by the another name ntu method where ntu is the number of transfer units method ntu is how many heat units have been transferred from ntu unit number of transfer units means what how many heat units have been transferred from hot fluid to the cold fluid so this we can go for whenever we know the inlet temperatures of hot and cold fluids only if all four terminal temperatures are known inlet exit of hot fluid inlet exit temperatures of cold fluids are known then we can go for the logarithmic mean temperature difference now uh, as for your model uh, you will learn the lmtd method for parallel flow heat exchanger as well as counter flow heat exchanger uh, and ntu method that is the effectiveness method for both parallel as well as counter flow heat exchanger now let us develop an expression uh, for the this logarithmic lmtd delta tm that is called uh, lmtd method for a parallel flow heat exchanger you know already you know uh, the meaning of a parallel flow heat exchanger parallel flow heat exchanger now let us consider this uh, figure so which is it shows you know the parallel flow heat exchanger with temperature distribution parallel flow heat exchanger you know both hot and cold fluids move in the same direction and this is the temperature distribution temperature distribution thi it is the inlet temperature of the hot fluid th not is the out out is the exit temperature similarly tc in and tc out okay so this is the the temperature difference available at the inlet of the heat exchanger delta t1 and delta t2 is the temperature of the heat uh, uh, temperature difference available at the exit of the heat exchanger okay consider a small elemental uh, area d at a distance x from the inlet and at the elemental uh, area under consideration the temperature difference available is delta t okay and this is the the temperature difference that the hot fluid is experience along the, uh, under the at the elemental area and dtc is the temperature difference that is uh, the experienced by the cold fluid now let us develop an expression for the uh, the heat exchange between or the uh, logarithmic mean temperature difference for this parallel flow heat exchanger now you know the both the fluids move in the same direction hot fluid is moving in the inner pipe and in the annular space cold fluid is moving the heat transfer between these two fluids you know uh, because you know uh, we are using the overall heat transfer coefficient in this in this equation number 5.1 q is equal to uva delta tm why you are using uva is because there is a pipe thickness the heat from the hot fluid is first received by the inner surface of the pipe by convection then it is conducted through the pipe material then from the outer surface of the pipe to the cold fluid which is moving through the annular space or a shell we can so hence we are using the there are uh, combined it is a combined mechanism of heat transfer 
convection, conduction, then convection. So hence we are using the overall heat transfer coefficient, and this is the mean temperature difference along the the heat exchanger. Now the rate of heat transfer from hot fluid to the cold fluid through an elemental area. We have considered the small elemental area D A. So this is given by D Q U D A delta T. Similarly, the heat given up by the hot fluid. It is dQ is equal to minus mH CPH dTH. This negative sign indicates that doesn't mean that it negative heat transfer rate. It is heat given up by the hot fluid. You know, whenever there is a addition or rejection, we have learned from the thermodynamics that whenever there is a addition or rejection of a heat, so it is in addition plus rejection minus the same is used here from your thermodynamics. Similarly. The cold fluid is receiving heat when it moves along the heat exchanger. Now we are considering the elemental area. This dQ is equal to plus mC CPC dTC. This dTC is the temperature difference that is experienced by the cold fluid. Plus sign indicates heat received by the cold fluid. Where CPH and CPC are the specific heats of hot and cold fluids respectively, and this dTH and dTC are the changes in the temperatures of hot and cold fluids. Now. The temperature difference between the hot and cold fluids, that delta T, you know, it is T H minus T C, which is given by this equation, and the same temperature difference between the hot and cold fluids over the elemental area, I can write it as D delta T equal to D T H minus D T C, and if you combine the equations 5.3, 5.4, and 5.6, so uh, you will get this equation. This D delta T is minus D Q by M H C P H, and Uh, this uh, uh, because previous equation you know it is dQ is equal to m C P uh, d A into this m m H C P H into d T H and d T S so we have taken uh, we have written it for the d T H it is dQ by m H C P H minus dQ by m C C P C so, suppose the same equation number five point seven we can express it in the terms of the heat capacity rates of hot and cold fluids. That is capital C H and capital C C. So it is D Q by C H minus D Q by C C, where C H is M C mass flow rate of the hot fluid and specific heat of the hot fluid. Similarly, this capital C C is the mass flow rate of the cold fluid uh, and uh, specific heat of the cold fluid. Now the very first uh, equation that is D Q is equal to U D A delta T. What you have done substituting the value of this D Q. Uh, from the uh, equation 5.2, this is U D A delta T, and this delta T is written here. Okay, it is U D A delta T. So I have written it as D delta by delta T is equal to so minus n is taken out. It is one one by C H plus one over C G. Now we have written this equation D delta by delta T for a small elemental area and for the entire heat exchanger. If you integrate between the limits, inlet and exit conditions, here delta T, that the inlet of the heat exchanger, temperature difference available is delta T one, and at the exit of the heat exchanger, this is available delta T two. So for area, it varies between zero to a. So if you for after performing the integration and substituting the limits, you will get this: ln delta T two by delta T one is equal to minus U A one by C H plus one over C C one over C C, and we also know that all along the surface of the heat exchanger, all or along the length of the heat exchanger, the heat transfer between hot and cold fluids is given by this equation. Uh, Q is equal to capital C H. This is the heat capacity rate, which is uh, mass product of mass flow rate of hot fluid and specific heat of hot fluid. T H I minus T H not. That is the delta T. M C P delta T. This equation you are familiar from your thermodynamics. Similarly, for the cold fluid is under. That means here we are deriving that with whatever the heat it is lost by the hot fluid is completely received. Whatever the heat given up by the hot fluid is completely received by the under no loss conditions we are writing this equation. It is C C heat capacity rate of cold fluid. Cold fluid. Uh, Into the T C not minus exit temperature of the hot fluid minus inlet temperature of the cold fluid. Okay. Now from equation five point one one, what I can write one this uh, one by C H 
because I need in the previous equation, I need one by CH and one by CC. This is THI minus TH naught by Q. Similarly, one by CC is TC naught minus TCI by Q. So if you substituting equation 5.12 and uh, equation 5.13 and equation 5.10, this is the equation q is equal to we get uva delta t2 minus delta t1 by ln delta t2 by delta t1 delta t1 total heat transfer rate in terms of mean temperature difference now it is also known fact that it is q is equal to uva delta tm we have written earlier in the beginning of this derivation of development of this equation so now this delta tm is the logarithmic mean temperature difference okay logarithmic mean so land term is there hence the name logarithmic mean temperature difference so this uh, delta tm it is given by del delta t2 minus delta t1 land delta t2 by delta t1 what is this delta t2 it is the the temperature difference available at the exit of the heat exchanger so exit of the heat exchanger temperature difference available is th naught minus tc naught right okay Next, this delta T1 is the temperature difference available at the inlet of the heat exchanger. It is THI minus TCI for a parallel flow heat exchanger. Similarly here, same delta T2 by delta T1. It is ln TH0 minus TC0 divided by THI minus TCI. Similarly, now let us arrive at the uh, let us develop an expression for the same manner whatever we did for the parallel flow heat exchanger uh, for a uh, same way now let us develop an expression for the logarithmic mean temperature that is uh, mean temperature difference that is delta tm for a counter flow heat exchanger you know counter flow heat exchanger uh, this uh, figure shows the counter flow heat exchanger with the temperature distribution counter flow heat exchanger already you know the meaning of the counter flow heat exchanger here hot fluid is flowing through the inner pipe okay uh, hot fluid inlet temperature is thi and hot fluid outlet temperature is tho you can see or some uh, if you refer some other textbooks uh, some textbooks they will use th1 and th2 don't confuse with the terminology used they are one and the same it may be thi or th0 or it is th1 and th2 similarly tci TC0 or TC1 and TC2. Don't confuse with the terminology used. They are all same. And this is the temperature distribution. You can see hot fluid is moving in this direction and cold fluid moving in the opposite direction. This is the delta T available. Uh, whatever we did for the uh, uh, parallel flow heat exchanger to derive the uh, logarithmic mean temperature difference equation delta Tm, consider a small uh, other elemental area dA. Same way what we did. Okay. The, this is the uh, delta T1 available at the inlet of the heat exchanger. Delta T1 is nothing but here THI minus TC not here. There it was THI and TCI for parallel flow. Now it will slight, it will change depending upon the movement of the hot and cold fluids. Whereas delta 2 is the temperature difference available at the exit of the heat exchanger, which is the difference of THO and TCI. That is the only change. And some sign convention change will be there that you will came to know while developing the equation and we know the total heat transfer between the uh, hot and cold fluids is given by this equation q is equal to u a delta tm and uh, now let us consider the heat transfer between the hot and cold fluids through an elemental area small elemental area considered da so now i can write it as dq is equal to u da delta t u da delta t it is dq is equal to u da delta t now similarly the heat given up by the hot fluid whenever there is always uh, the heat given up by the hot fluid is it is negative sign dq is equal to minus mh cph dth mh cph dth the heat gained by the cold fluid here it is written as again with the negative sign okay for parallel flow we have written it as a plus now for counter flow we are writing writing it as a a negative here so if you refer to the sketch here you see for a cold fluid okay 
if you move along the length of the heat exchanger in the x direction the temperature reduces here but in the opposite direction opposite direction the temperature of a cold fluid keeps on increases to account for this it is written with a negative sign because at the inlet of the heat exchanger its temperature is more and at the exit of the heat exchanger the temperature of the cold fluid is less that means all along the length of the heat exchanger if you move from inlet to exit the cold fluid temperature keeps on decreases here that's why it is written with a negative sign it is just to account for the 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 quantity of heat that is available with the cold fluid when you move from inlet to the exit of the heat exchanger that's why it is written with negative sign but for parallel flow the uh, if you move along the length of the heat exchanger the cold fluid temperature keeps on increases there we use it as a positive here it is used with a negative sign just to uh, consider for the direction of movement of the hot and cold fluids here if you move from inlet of the heat exchanger to the exit of the heat exchanger the cold fluid temperature keeps on changes but if you move in the opposite direction it will be increases hence it is written with the negative sign and you know this cph and cpc are the specific heats of hot and cold fluids respectively hot and cold fluids respectively and you know already we are aware while dealing with the uh, uh, developing expression for the parallel flow heat exchanger uh, dth and dtc are the changes in the temperatures of hot and cold fluids now the temperature difference between the hot and cold fluids at the inlet of the elemental area consider okay at the inlet of the elemental area consider what i can write this is delta t is equal to th minus tc th minus tc th minus tc now the temperature difference between the hot and cold fluids over the elemental area okay it is dth minus dtc and if you combine the equations 5.18 5.19 and 21 okay we will get this equation d delta t is equal to minus dq by mh cph plus dq by mc cpc okay for parallel flow it was with negative sign now it is changed to positive because of dq for a cold fluid also it is written with a negative sign minus minus it is changed to a plus sign so we can also write this equation to 5.22 in terms of the heat capacity rates of hot and cold fluids hot and cold fluids the heat capacity rate of hot fluid is denoted by the symbol ch and heat capacity rate of cold fluid is denoted by the symbol cc where the ch is the product of mass flow rate of hot fluid and specific heat of the hot fluid and uh, heat capacity rate of cc is the product of mass flow rate of the cold fluid and specific heat of the cold fluid so if you write in the heat capacity rates of hot and cold fluids the equation reduces to 5.22 uh, minus dq by ch plus dq by cc and if you substitute the value of uh, a uh, dq from the equation number 5.17 which is uh, uda delta t okay if you substitute uda delta t uda delta t it is a common factor if you take it is uda is outside and delta t is shifted to this side it is d delta t by delta t which is equal to minus uda into bracket 1 over ch minus 1 over cc and if you integrate this equation 2.25.24 sorry for 5.24 between inlet and outlet conditions inlet and outlet conditions so what is the inlet condition here for a temperature it is delta t1 delta t2 integral of d delta t by delta t between the limits delta t1 and delta 2 here u remains constant here heat capacity for a uh, just now you have seen the the values uh, Uh, the overall heat transfer coefficients okay so based on the the they are given in the four different types of fluids it is given there so but only variable is area here from inlet to exit it is it changes from some 0 to a 
Here, yeah, this heat capacity rates of hot and cold fluids also for a uh, particular heat exchanger. Uh, okay, based on your design, mass flow rate remains constant. Uh, based on the the temperature conditions, your uh, specific heat of uh, hot and cold fluids remains same. Mass flow rate uh, they will more or less same. So these are all more or less remains constant. The only only variable is the dA. Only variable is the dA. So if you integrate and perform, let us perform the integration and substitute the limits. Okay. So this d delta t by delta t is land delta t. You know, it is you know from the integration. So it is land delta t. If you substitute the limits, it is land delta t two by delta t one, which is equal to minus u a integral of d a is a area between zero and a. So obviously it is a. So it is one by c h minus one over c c. Now it is also we know the total heat transfer between. the hot and cold fluids from inlet of the heat exchanger to the total length of the heat exchanger all along the length of the heat exchanger it is both uh, under no loss conditions okay now let us this equation is written with uh, under no loss conditions but in actual practical situation there may be losses but we need to consider those losses while evaluating the either lmtd analysis while you are analyzing the heat exchangers either using lmtd method or the intuitive method Uh, definitely we come across the losses but in the theory uh, these equations uh, theoretical analysis these equations have been derived with a certain assumptions so we will come to know later what are all uh, these assumptions we have considered once we complete all the the derivations so this q is given by this equation ch into thi minus th not okay uh, it is mcp delta t this equation you know from your thermodynamics ch is the heat capacity of Uh, hot fluid similarly for a cold fluid is a heat gain equation heat gain equation heat capacity rate of cold fluid it into tc not exit temperature of the cold fluid minus inlet temperature of the cold fluid so from this equation 5.2 or 6 okay 5.26 i can write this 1 by ch as this thi minus th not by q And similarly, one by CC because I need these one by CH and one by CC to substitute back in the previous equation. Uh, TC not minus TC I by Q. So if you substitute this equation five point two seven and equation five point two eight in equation five point two five, so this is equal to Q is equal to U A delta T two minus delta T one divided by uh, land delta T two by delta T one. and also we know this uh, total heat transfer in terms of the mean temperature difference this uh, q is equal to uva delta t now if you equate these two equations 5.2 and they both are heat transfer equations okay heat transfer equations if you equate 5.29 and 5.30 you will get the expression for the logarithmic mean temperature difference equation for a counter flow heat exchanger so this is the equation this delta tm is logarithmic mean temperature difference delta tm delta t2 because uva uva eliminated we left with only this delta tm is equal to delta t2 minus delta t1 if you go to previous slide now you can see this if you equate uva delta tm this is uva delta t2 minus delta t1 divided by land delta t2 by delta t2. uva uva is cancelled here okay if you equate so what you left with delta tm is equal to this excluding uva that's what you are observing here this logarithmic uh, mean temperature difference it is delta t2 minus delta t1 divided by ln delta t2 by delta t1 which is equal to so for a uh, counter flow heat exchanger counter flow heat exchanger uh, both the fluids are moving in the opposite direction here delta t2 is the temperature difference available at the exit of the heat exchanger here hot fluid is coming out whereas the cold fluid is entering hence it is delta t2 is TH not minus TCI minus into THI minus TC not. It is the the temperature difference available at the inlet of the heat exchanger. At the inlet of the heat exchanger, cold fluid is coming out, hot fluid is entering. So it is THI minus TC not divided by land delta T two by delta T one. Where delta T one and delta T one, you know, it is TH not minus TCI divided by THI minus TC not. Now. let me stop okay we will continue in the next class